students, this is the first set of notes in the oceanography unit. It's called ES 10.1, the ocean floor. As always for these notes, you're going to write down everything in orange text. The study of the ocean floor is called bathymetry, and the technology that allows us to map the features of the seafloor is called sonar. We've talked about that in the plate tectonics unit. Sonar stands for sound, navigation, and ranging. It's the same principle where bats use sound waves to navigate their way around a cave. Um, whales also use sonar. But a boat can also use sonar to bounce sound waves off the seafloor, and the precise time that it takes them to return reveals a precise topography of the seafloor. So the topography is like the elevation, the various changing elevations of the seafloor, so you can see mountains and valleys and stuff like that. The ocean floor is not flat. It contains many peaks and valleys, as well as different shapes and formations. It looks a lot like the surface on the continents. Many formations found on the ocean floor are caused by plate tectonics. When plates rub against other, each other, mountains are formed, as well as other features like trenches and rifts. We're going to talk specifically about particular ocean floor formations that you need to know. So an underwater mountain is called a seamount, and you need to know how these are formed too. Seamounts are formed by plate tectonics, the same way mountains are formed uh, anywhere. A guillot is a seamount with a flat top, and that's formed by plate tectonics. You have to have a seamount first, and then it gets eroded so that the top is flat, and the sea level is now above the guillot. It has to be uh, an underwater flat-topped seamount. It's called a guillot. The continental shelf is the area around each continent that extends underwater. So that's formed by the erosion and, and deposition of continental materials. So rivers carry um, sediments to the continental shelf and deposit them there, and so it builds up extending outward from the continents. Every continent has a continental shelf extending some distance in underwater. The continental slope, if you go beyond the shelf, is the steep drop-off beyond the continental shelf, so it gets a lot deeper where the continental slope is, and that is also formed by erosion and deposition. You'll notice that all of these formations has the how it forms in parentheses. And beyond the continental slope is the continental rise. That's when it stops being so steep, um, but it's still dropping off and getting deeper at the continental rise. The area beyond the continental slope where the drop off is less steep, also formed by erosion and deposition. And all three of these things together are called the continental margin. The continental margin is the continental shelf, continental slope, and continental rise as one big area. And the way it's formed is erosion and deposition. Lots of ocean life sticks near to the continental margin, uh, in part because that's where the most sunlight is. The mid-ocean ridge we talked about in the plate tectonics unit is a divergent plate boundary where new ocean crust is being formed. And that's formed by plate tectonics. Uh, the mid-ocean ridges um, cover the planet. There's the mid-Atlantic ridge between us and Europe and Africa, uh, but that's not the only ridge. Anywhere where there's a diversion plate boundary underwater is a mid-ocean ridge. A rift valley is the valley formed at the center of the mid-ocean ridge, also formed by plate tectonics. An ocean trench is a deep depression in the seafloor that occurs at a subduction zone, and a subduction zone is a convergent plate boundary. We talked about Mariana Trench in the plate tectonics unit as well. That's the deepest part of the ocean. It's a subduction zone where one plate is sliding beneath another plate getting destroyed. Ocean trenches are the deepest parts of the ocean. There's virtually no sunlight, and there are some organisms that live down there, and they get pretty weird. This is an anglerfish. 
and it's a bioluminescent lure on top of its head that uh, attracts prey. Uh, abyssal plain, that's just a large, flat, almost level area of the deep ocean basin. And I don't have a way that that formed because the abyssal plain is sort of like the absence of any formation. A submarine canyon you can see in the diagram here is a deep cut into the continental margin. And that's formed by erosion, usually a river. So most of them, you can say, it's formed by either plate tectonics or erosion or some combination of plate tectonics and erosion. So this is going to be familiar to you. You are going to be able to label this diagram um, or a similar diagram. And here are the answers. Submarine Canyon, Continental Slope, Seamounts, Mid-Ocean Ridge, Island. So E is an island. That's uh, It looks like a guillot, but it's, uh, it's actually touching the surface, so it's an island. The Continental Shelf, um, the guillot is G, and then the trench is H. Normally, they wouldn't necessarily be like this close together, but for the sake of the diagram, the trench is right next to the Mid-Ocean Ridge. Um, the Abyssal Plain is I. It's just a flat area. The Rift Valley is J at the center of the Mid-Ocean Ridge, and then K is the Continental Rise. Um, take note that there's a Continental Shelf on both sides, because there's a shoreline on both sides. Um, L would be the shoreline, that's the only letter I forgot to put in there. Um, but it shows, you know, a condensed version of an entire ocean here, with one of each formation that you need to know. One other thing to talk about in this unit is sea level rise. You may have heard of this in talks of, in science class before. When we, when, when we talk about global climate change, we talk about sea level rise. But over Earth's long history, temperatures have fluctuated quite a bit back and forth. There's been several ice ages, and during that time, the expanse of ice at the poles increases. And when more of Earth's oceans are frozen, sea level is lower. And so during those times, more of the continental margins were exposed. So like during uh, the most recent ice age, there you know basically the the polar ice caps stretched down to almost Virginia, and you can see the the south South Pole's ice extends to touch the uh, tip of South America. So much more ice means that the 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 liquid water is lower, and so more of this continental shelf would be exposed during that time. Nowadays, rising temperatures in the atmosphere are leading to the melting of ice caps, which is making sea levels rise. Thermal expansion, which means things expand when they get warmer, makes sea levels rise even more. And if you live in an island nation that's really low, or a coastal community that's really low to the sea level, um, you're prone to increased flooding. and You could be in danger of becoming inundated by seawater, meaning that like the, the community would not be, you couldn't live there anymore, basically. This is a model that shows like what Florida could potentially look like if sea levels rose a lot, because Florida is a really low-lying state. Um, you know, there's barely any hills in Florida. It's pretty much just flat. Um, some areas are even below sea level. And folks in, uh, I believe this is Bangladesh, is a very low-lying country where people live in coastal communities and. Um, this would be one of the most threatened countries by sea level rise. I can't recall where this picture is from. I want to say this is a uh, Pacific Island nation that's really low, maybe Tuvalu. And this is a picture of Tangier Island, which is in the Chesapeake Bay, which is a old-timey kind of crabbing fishing community on a little island in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay. If you ever want to go there, you have to take a ferry. Um, but they are in danger of losing their homes because of sea level rise. And that's it for the notes. Um, here's what it would look like if you typed it all up and fit it on one slide. It's doable, although if you want to use more than one slide, that's okay. 
when I give the fill in the blank notes, it's on two different slides just for organization state sake, and that's fine to leave it on two slides. And we'll go over these in class.